mentioned Paula Roberts. She has uh, laryn kind of a laryngitis, and uh, she didn't said she didn't have COVID, but she is uh, having uh, some problems with her throat. So <clears throat> Matthew chapter ten, and uh, we will uh, begin starting a new text in verse sixteen. I'm going to read several verses there. Jesus says, "Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves." Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you uh, in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for the testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak of, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak." For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up brother to death, and father the child, and children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Now we're not going to cover all of that. Uh, we're really just going to focus on verse 16 tonight. Um, the beginning of this text, he uses the word behold. Uh, and that just simply means Jesus is saying when he says behold, he's just saying pay attention closely to what I'm about to say. And then he begins to speak to his disciples about them being sheep in the midst of wolves. Now sheep was a common uh, title that Jesus has used for his children, him being the good shepherd, we being the sheep. And, and let me point out to you some common characteristics of sheep. And, uh, and, and uh, when we think about ourselves, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, they, sheep are among the most dependent, uh, helpless, and unsmart uh, of domesticated animals, okay? Does that make you feel real good tonight? <laughs> uh, but uh, nonetheless, that's the case. Sheep are often uh, frightened when there's no reason to be frightened, when harmless things uh, come upon them, and then oftentimes they're very aloof when dangerous things come. They pay no attention to it or don't take note of it. Uh, and when real threats do present themselves, they have no particular natural um, uh, um, defenses. They don't, uh, they, they can't bite, they, they, they can't have sharp horns to hook you or anything like that. They just, they're pretty defenseless and their only option really is to run and they're not very good runners. So a sheep are just, um, they're just really very vulnerable and uh, there's a really good book if, you, if you're looking for good things to read. Uh, how many of you read A Shepherd Looks at Psalms 23? Has anybody ever read that book? Philip Keller? It's probably back here in this library if you'd like to read it. I, there's a lot of Keller books back there. I've read it a long time ago. It's a really good book uh, because Keller himself had been a shepherd, um, a true everyday shepherd for many, many years, and he's also a seasoned Christian and author. So, so this book is very well written, and in that book he points out a lot of truths about sheep that the average person wouldn't, wouldn't know. And, and he parallels sheep unto uh, Christians and, and, and draws the parallels between the two. And, and he points out in, in this book, and he describes in great detail how vulnerable uh, sheep are. And um, I'll just give you a handful of things here, and then we'll move on. One thing, they're very indiscriminate about what they eat. Uh, a sheep will just eat almost anything, and so consequently they can really easily get into poisonous forage, uh, weeds, or things of that nature. Uh, they're prone, they're very prone to infection and disease, and so they're very dependent upon uh, their shepherd to inspect them regularly. Uh, and you just look them over and make sure that they're healthy and, and, and free of any uh, uh, health problems. Uh, three. Third one, uh, flies. They're very susceptible to flies. They're, the sheep have a lot of uh, fly problems. Um, uh, the, the flies will gather around their head, which they do most farm animals, uh, around their nose and their eyes and ears. And sheep can get so disturbed uh, and upset over flies, they can act, they'll, they'll literally take their head 
and beat against a, a post or a tree or a rock or something along those lines. Uh, flies can lay he eggs around their eyes uh, to the extent that they can often cause them to, to have blindness. Um, if a sheep senses danger, sometimes they will run until they just drop and exhaust it. And so much so that there has been known for pregnant use uh, to actually lose their babies. They ran so far and so hard and exhausted themselves and, and lost the, the babies that they were carrying. And so these are just a few of the things that Fel Keller points out uh, about the vulnerabilities of, uh, of, uh, of sheep. Uh, the greatest vulnerability they have is to predators. And of course, wolves would be the most, uh, uh, most prevalent, most popular of those. Uh, Middle Easterners uh, that Jesus was speaking to, and even today, Middle Easterners uh, would, they understand shepherds more so than we do. They understand sheep and, and the dangers of wolves more so than we do. We don't live in an environment where sheep are, are prevalent. And so uh, when Jesus spoke this, this would have been something uh, that uh, they would have been familiar with. And uh, they, they, understand the, they understood the importance of the shepherd and his need for being with his sheep and, and protecting his sheep and keeping them healthy. They understood all of this. So Jesus' metaphor here in this text would have been very clear to his disciples. And again, you and I might need a little additional reading <clears throat> to discover some of these things. But uh, they knew when Jesus spoke of sheep, and uh, they knew if he was speaking of them, they knew what that meant, okay, the, the similarities, okay. And, uh, and so he refers to, he begins there in, in the Gospels referring to here his apostles or disciples as sheep. And then we're considered sheep and every born-again person uh, in history uh, from that point on is also uh, considered a sheep. And so... Uh, he says here in verse, verse 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And so what he's doing there is he's given really his disciples and he's given us today a graphic uh, picture of Christians going out into an unchristian world or a Christ-rejecting world. And just kind of by, by speaking of sheep and going into wolves, he, he, he's speaking of the hostility and the... Uh, uh, the, the dangers that, uh, that Christians face and as a result of following him. And he's warning them uh, and us here today of the demands and the, the, the risk of discipleship. When you follow closely to Jesus, there are just going to be certain things. Now, we live in an age uh, where uh, it, we live in an age and also a nation where uh, there's not a great deal of hostility uh, that we experience or persecution. Uh, seldom does a believer in the United States really experience much persecution. But how long that will last, we don't know. Times are changing, have been changing uh, for some time, and it could come a day that there's much more um, uh, opposition to you and I as, as Christians. But right now, uh, it seems that uh, we don't experience a great deal, embarrassing, uh, embarrassingly so compared to generations uh, Past. But nonetheless, all believers of any age are expected to be prepared and willing uh, to endure and to persevere if they face persecution or face opposition. Uh, faithfulness uh, to God in any nation and uh, in any age is going to fly in the face of Satan. Okay? Obedience, uh, faithfulness, uh, 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 commitment. Uh, to the Lord is something Satan doesn't like and it's something that flies in the face of this world system. And so it does mean that we will experience some opposition. And the key in facing opposition, I love the next part of this verse, we'll look at it in just a moment, but is to wait upon the Lord, trust in Him during times of opposition, and then have the appropriate attitude. And that's what Jesus gives us in verse 16. He says, Be ye therefore, in the second part of the verse, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is my very favorite instruction from the Lord in the whole Bible. I, I've, I've um, told this to many people and I've tried to apply it to my own life. I need this all the time. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I'm usually 
foolish as a sheep and mean as a snake. And uh, I have to admit that. And I, this helps me uh, a great deal. And um, in, in, in the Egyptian culture, uh, serpents were, were symbolic of wisdom. Uh, we know uh, the nature of a, a serpent is that they're very cautious, they're very smart, they're very shrewd animals. And, and so what Jesus is telling us here is to operate in such a way that, that we would remind you of a serpent, being very intelligent, um, shrewd, and, uh, and cautious about what we're doing. Uh, the Bible says in Colossians 4, 5, it says, Walk in wisdom towards them with the... With the Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. He's talking about out here in the outside world, okay? Redeeming the time. You've heard that verse many times. It simply means making the most of the time, making the most of opportunities. And the ideal is for you and I to live and operate in this lost world in such a way that we can stay influential, that we can um, keep the the doors open with people, that we can keep the, uh, the, the dialogue going, if you will, with other people and, and making the most of every opportunity that God's given us. And, and we do that by saying the right thing and doing the right thing. It doesn't mean compromising the truth. It doesn't mean um, a bit falsehoods in any way. It just means that conducting ourselves in, in such a way that the things we say and do are not... Uh, are not uh, uh, going to slam doors, okay? I'm not always good at this. I, I have to admit, I tend to want to react many times to my environment, and that's that really never works out well. Jesus wants us to not react, but he wants us to act. He lays out in his word the qualities and the characteristics that he wants us to have. We've studied so much of it, uh, and we'll continue to do so, but uh, you go back to Matthew chapter 5, especially in when we studied the Beatitudes, those are things that he wants us to, to uh, live by and possess. And uh, uh, when those things, when those qualities and characteristics are cultivated in our life, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to adopt those things. Then when tricky situations come up, uh, whether it be with an individual or with a group or whatever, uh, with the help of the Lord, we can act in the same way that we've been taught to act by the Lord, as opposed to reacting to whatever it is, the situation. Reacting to the situation is just really going to cause us to uh, conduct ourselves in the wrong way. But acting in the way Jesus has taught us will uh, make the situation, even a bad situation, can turn into an opportunity. And that's what that verse is saying when it says redeeming the time, making the most of opportunities. And he says there, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And I don't know if you know very much about doves, but doves are gentle birds. They're not, uh, you don't see doves uh, acting um, uh, aggressively with one another. They're usually perched on a fence or a rail or, or something and, and just very docile. They even have a, a gentle look about them. They're just not aggressive looking birds. And, and scripture uh, in Scripture, doves represent purity, uh, they, they represent innocence, uh, and they're also uh, used metaphorically for the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was baptized, if you'll remember, the Holy Spirit uh, descended upon him like a dove. And, and so it's symbolic of, of, of the Spirit of God. Jesus was not just great, but the perfect example of being harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. Uh, all throughout his ministry, as you read, he had opportunity, he had opportunity and the power to launch assaults on anybody who opposed him, and he never one time did so. And uh, he, 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 uh, one particular incident stands out, and you'll remember it, it's in Matthew chapter 22. Remember when the Pharisees, uh, in an attempt to trap him and, um, uh, and cause him to do the wrong thing, they asked him about paying taxes. Uh, to the Roman government. And what they were hoping for, the desired uh, effect they were trying to get was, uh, was to make him either defend the Roman government, in which case he would fly in the face of all the Jews, or in some way uh, vilify the Roman government, in which case he would be in trouble with Roman officials. That was their desire. You see, they were crafty. And uh, Jesus didn't do either one. 
He didn't vilify the government or condemn them, but he didn't condone its ways. He just simply said this, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And, uh, and, and then the very next verse is what's interesting. It says, when they heard these things, they marveled. They're pretty amazed at his wisdom, okay? And they left him and went their way. You see, Jesus had an opportunity there uh, that could have gone away had he responded in the wrong way. But he was wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. He responded with great wisdom, and he, he made the most of that opportunity. He seized the moment, if you will. And, uh, uh, and most of us, folks, you mentioned government, and we'll get our hackles up right quick, right? And we'll go into some sort of rant and, and, and offend everybody, you know. But, uh, but uh, uh, Jesus knew that uh, there was nothing to be gained by that, and he simply um, uh, responded in a wise way. And, and he was uncompromisingly, uh, 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 well, he uncompromisingly uncom held on to the truth. He, I mean, he was all truth. He was truth. He was the word of God, okay? But he never did it in an abrasive, inconsiderate, belligerent um, uh, way he was harmless as a dove, and I think about the uh, uh, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was obviously a very strong leader, and he uncompromisingly declared the word of God. But he also operated with such wisdom and harmless as a dove. I want to read to you. This is uh, out of First Corinthians chapter nine, and I'm winding up, and we'll we'll be done right after this. He says, Paul says this: For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all men that I might gain the more and unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are without the law as without the law being not without the law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without the law to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak and made and I am made all things to all men that I might um, that I might by all means save some. What Paul's saying there is, and it's not saying that Paul was an actor, he was not a chameleon that adapted to everything that he came in contact with, but Paul was simply saying, hey, when I'm dealing with Jews, I know how to read the room and conduct myself with Jews in order to not lose my influence and my opportunity. When I'm with the Gentiles, I, I can do the same thing. He, he, Paul just, he, he, he operated with such wisdom that, now obviously we know that doors closed at times, okay, because he ended up being flogged and, and, and beaten and whipped and everything else, okay. But as best he could, he would go into situations and deal with people on the level they were rather than going in and radically, offensively, uh, 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 and foolishly slamming those doors shut. He kept his influence and uh, seized the, uh, the opportunity. You see, pureness, our purity and kindness and graciousness are always allies of the truth, okay? But uh, it being inconsiderate or, or brutally offensive, uh, harsh words and harsh attitudes always work against our ability to express the truth. Just shuts doors, guys. Uh, plain and simple. And so we have to learn, again, this is some of the best advice that you find in the whole Bible. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay, the next time we're together, we'll, we'll get started with uh, verse 17. Okay, appreciate you guys being here. Pray, pray, pray for our people to get well and we can get the house of God filled back up uh, for His glory. Okay, all right, let's stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer.